We are Jerry and Fima Lifshitz. We are African art collectors. And we want you to experience what it is living with art. Welcome to our home. My name is Fima Lifshitz. I've been collecting art for many years. Perhaps my first painting I acquired in 1961. But the African art in particular has been a journey with my wife, Jerry. We have undertaken this journey together for the last 33 years. And it's been quite a journey collecting and learning about African art. Up to this date, for many years, we have housed the, the art in our home and it became a private museum. This home is relatively small for all the art that we have, but we love it like that. It is the art of living with art, being able to have art in every place that you walk in this house, every wall, every section, and that is quite a pleasure for us. I've been asked many times which one is my favorite piece. This is a very difficult question to answer because it's like asking a parent who is your favorite son or daughter. I'd like to invite all of you to take a look at some pieces that have particular importance. The culture that they were, that created these pieces might be unique, might be very old, or might be even non-existent, yet their art survived. I'd like to uh, point out to you some specific pieces that are very expressive, very dramatic, very beautiful, and they all transmit different beliefs of the cultures that created the art. The mask that you see here is uh, from Côte d'Ivoire. It's a Baul mask. Baule, uh, the Baule people created beautiful masks that were buried all over until the last 40 or 50 years when they were discovered and they started uncovering the masks. Uh, one of the most powerful ones is this fire spitter. It's very big compared to the small uh, masks that uh, are usually carved and this has beautiful color as well. The Europeans, when they first saw these masks being danced, they thought they were very impressive and the dancers were trying to spit fire and scared all the evil spirits away. In Nigeria, the Yoruba art is very well known. One of the areas that they are experts and they are able to produce beautiful art is the beaded art. Here you see a cape, the king's cape, that was worn for festivities. It's an absolute marvelous piece of work because it takes so long to create it. Additionally, the hat that goes with it is also beaded in great detail. The cape, as well as the hat, have figures that are very well regarded in their mythology and their traditions. The next uh, group of masks that I think is important to bring to your attention is the Maconde masks, the helmet masks that were done primarily in Mozambique and Tanzania. The uh, Maconde masks are usually hollow and they are made from the Mipongo tree which is now being preserved and not allowed to be the cut anymore. Each of the masks has a specific feature that might represent the cause of death. For example, look at the black eye in one of them ha that denotes a big trauma. Another is the disease with a stroke with a deformed face. The Mossi culture, which uh, who, they inhabit Burkina Faso in Africa, they produced important uh, sculptures made out of stone. These are very difficult to make and quite heavy. They, are, they were done by the Naya Messi. 
those were the artists that created these type of uh, sculptures. They are very unique and very rare in this country, as were difficult to carry and bring to this country. In Nigeria, there is an important group of people called the Igbos. Igbos were uh, at some point uh, in the modern area declared independence from Nigeria in the Biafra war and tragedy ensued. They created beautiful art too. And the Alusi sculpture that you see here is uh, uh, old. It has some damage because of the wear and tear. And one of the important features is the extended arms, the palms showing uh, we are here for peace and welcoming you. Here we have a bronze cast that is of King Oba from Benin Kingdom, a kingdom that existed until the late 1800s when the English ransacked it and burned the palaces down to the ground. Of course, they took most of the art with them. And this bronze cast of King Oba is a beautiful piece uh, that uh, used to be adorned with a, an ivory tusk on top. It's uh, very detailed and reflects all the mastery of bronze casting that many times predates the European bronze uh, art. Sierra Leone is a, a country where Mami Wata carvings are very prevalent and very prominent. Mami Wata means mother water, and it, it reflects the mythology about the water where all the evil spirits might come out from or go back into. And they also reflect the beauty of the person as well as the curse that might be uh, inflicted upon whoever doesn't believe in this mythology. The Mami Wata mythology transcends not Sierra Leone and is now widespread throughout the world, of course, all of Africa. Guinea-Bissau is an island in Northwest Africa, which has been uh, uh, quite isolated from the development of Africa, even until recently. The Bijogo people utilize the bull to ch the, the, for their uh, dances. And when reaching adolescence, they needed to prove that they were macho and they would dance all these bulls in rituals that were quite ferocious, showing that they were strong enough to be an adult and maybe be able to marry. The knock terracottas are very unique. Uh, they are unique in various uh, uh, ways. One is that they are beautiful terracotta pieces that are quite old. This particular terracotta sculpture is being thermoluminescence dated for almost 2,000 years. The knock culture doesn't exist anymore, but the art survived until the present time. For those who uh, wonder how come, uh, how does it feel to live with all this art, I can tell you it's an experience. And the more you do, the more you like it. And the more you, you, you uh, live with it, the more you appreciate the qualities of each of the pieces. And uh, when you put them all together as a collage, it becomes evident that it's uh, very different and yet very beautiful.